since literally day one. She got scared. It's gonna be really loud. <laughs> herself is her own special little story because she is our miracle baby purebred chocolate lab literally from day one she was as they say sick as a dog <laughs> I'm looking at her so I keep looking down she was with us for a few hours and then all night she was throwing up. The first time she threw up, it was a plastic bottle cap that we figured must have been in like the barn that she was kept in when he let them out to like see the rest of the litter. I'm pretty sure she picked it up and ate it because there was like three different puppies or whatever. And so we're like, okay, whatever, not a big deal. Clean her up, we gave her a bath. And then all night, like every hour on the hour pretty much she was throwing up and she slept on the bed with us um, just so we could keep an eye on her and wake up if we needed to which we did <laughs> several times and so we're like okay well tomorrow's Saturday let's take her to the vet she needs to go anyway and you know so they can get to know her and get her shots and stuff and she tested positive for parvo so that was scary. We had had the dog less than 24 hours. She was 12 weeks old, 13 weeks old, and we were, like, literally had her life in our hands. It was, do we leave her, you know, and spend 250 bucks a night for the vet to maybe save her life? Or do we take her back to the breeder and say, you gave us a sick dog, we want our money back? Do we ask for a different dog altogether? Do we just take our chances and take her back home? And it was really scary and I was kind of mad because I didn't want a dog in the first place. On top of that, she has fucking parvo and it's like sad and scary and we have to make this decision in like minutes because we're sitting here at the vet. And I was like, well, you know, we have her now. Like I don't feel right just giving her up. And Bree didn't either, and we were upset, and I was like crying at the vet. I felt really stupid. And um, so I called and I told my mom because she had been around our dogs. The vet said like they're safe if they're over like five years old or whatever. But I wanted to let them know so that, you know, we could start bleaching stuff. And she was like, you need to call the breeder. Do you want me to call him? You need to let him know. And I was like, no, don't call him. I'm embarrassed already. And so Bree calls. And she lets him know, and he's like, don't leave her at the vet. They're going to charge you, like, an arm and a leg just to keep her, and all they're going to do is give her fluids. And he was like, bring her here. I'm going to treat her, obviously, for free. I'm going to get her back to health, and I'm going to make sure she comes home to you. And, I mean, we couldn't say no, really. It was going to save us, like, $1,300 or something insane to take her back. And he said he would pay for our gas money, and he would reimburse us, and... Um, for our vet visit, so we took her and she stayed with him for a week. You feeling better? Huh? You feeling better? You're a pretty girl. Yeah, you're a pretty girl. And she actually survived. And we went back to pick her up. We're really kind of hesitant because we're like, you know, it, it teeters on like, they could do really well and then all of a sudden go downhill the next day. So it was kind of like scary. We wanted to prolong it and keep her there as long as possible because we knew she was getting cared for. And we went back to pick her up and every single puppy that he had, mind you, he had several different types of dogs and litters. We kind of think it was a puppy mill. Um, every single other puppy died. Let that sink in. But she was alive and she is our little miracle baby except for the fact that she gets everything under the sun and I'm pretty sure the vet hates us <laughs> because we're constantly taking her for something she eats things she as you guys saw she had the safety pin that she swallowed open um, she's had giardia she's had worms she's had kennel cough she has had a growth inside of her lip already that needed to get like cut and stitched open. Um, she got fixed and her stitches did not dissolve 
and we had to cut them out ourselves because we're not driving all the way to the vet for them to do that. It was, we let it heal first. It, it had been several months, but they never dissolved or fell out or anything. Just our luck. Um, she currently has an ear infection. Everything, everything that could happen to a dog has pretty much happened to her, except for like maybe getting hit. But she is on like her 13th life right now and she's thriving. <laughs> She's, she's good. She just doesn't know when to stop. So she's constantly picking things up. But she's definitely our miracle child. She killed everyone else, but she survived. She survived herself. Huh? So yeah, she's she's mama's baby girl. And um, she's good. Last time I did that, she had blooded me. Your baby. Hi. Oh. Mama's baby. Thank you. She, she likes being held, but she's heavy. Also known as Pop or Papa, is going on. Oh, he just had a birthday and he is seven. Parker's seven. He's a shit too. Parker! Come on, buddy! Come on, hit him! Come on! Hi! He's grumpy. Um, he has been in the family since he was eight weeks old. He was tiny baby puppy. He was so freaking cute and so sweet and like fun. He had such a fun personality when he was younger. Not that he's not fun now, but he, yeah, he's a little more like guarded and nervous um, because when he was maybe three, he lost one of his eyes. And to this day, we don't know how exactly it happened, but we ruled out that it wasn't Klaus. We ruled out that it was him. We ruled it out. We ruled out it being Klaus. So my sister got out of the shower one day. She was the only one home. And she, like, heard, like, pacing and so she went to the kitchen and Parker was walking around the kitchen table with his eye hanging out. This is a little graphic, sorry. Um, his eye was hanging out and he was pacing around the kitchen table and he had blood on his own paws and obviously there were tracks in the kitchen. Klaus was just a puppy. He wasn't, I don't even think he was a year, maybe he was a little over a year if Parker was two or three. Um, and he was laying like further away from him. Um, he didn't have any blood on him. He didn't, he wasn't like interested. He wasn't like, I don't know. He was, it was weird because he was just hanging out and Parker was like growling at himself and he was freaking out. And so we took him to the emergency vet because of course it was like six o'clock on Saturday. And um, 
they had to do surgery because it was too far out for them to like just pop it back in. He had pulled it out on his own um, because I guess it, he realized it was like irritating him. He pawed at it and it kind of pulled the eye further down. It was dangling. It was a traumatic experience for me to see and I couldn't sleep for about two days because I felt like when I shut my eyes that was all I could picture. To this day, I can't even look at the photo that my sister took of his eye hanging out of his face. Like, it's disturbing. Um, so they sewed him up, and, like, they did a really nice job. Even after we took him to the vet, they were like, they sewed this really well. Like, it looks really good, and it healed really well. But, um, they even said, like, this breed, pugs, um, other small breeds with large eyes, they have... Um, such shallow eye sockets that even just a bump on the head could knock or like pop an eye out of the socket. And so we think like maybe they were playing in the kitchen or something or he bumped into something. And I mean, the worst case scenario happened for him to be alive, but then, you know, have something traumatic, you know, happen to him. So ever since then, he's kind of been a little more, um, Guarded, a little grumpy, doesn't want to play. <laughs> he doesn't like anyone in his face, like other dogs. Um, and he's, he's just a little, you know, protective of himself because he's gotten hurt. Yeah. But he's sweet. He's um, very hungry. He likes to eat your food. <laughs> <laughs> if you leave a taco on the table and it's accessible in some way to him, he will find a way to get that taco and scarf the whole thing down before you get back. <laughs> so you gotta be careful. But I mean, he has like high spirits. He has a high tolerance for pain, which is interesting. But they said um, that night when he was back there before surgery, it had been a couple hours that he was just sitting there in a kennel. And they said he was always so happy when someone walked back or there was another animal coming through. Like, he would just get up and he'd be like, what's going on, guys? Like, I'm ready. Let me out. Um, so, I mean, that, it was comforting to hear that it didn't bother him as much as we thought it did. Um, but he's, he's fun. He's, he's, he's got a little bite to his bark. Um, but he's, he's good. He, uh, see for yourself. <laughs> He is going to be six this year, and he's my little baby. Uh, we got him six years ago. <laughs> he was two months, and he was ginormous. Like, he looked big for his age. And so we kind of didn't want a big, unruly dog. So my mom <laughs> Volan told me to um, help out at this dog training slash daycare facility so that we could kind of get some free training in exchange for me helping out. So he went to volunteer with me every day, every weekday pretty much. Um, he learned a lot. He's super smart. He's my one dog who listens to me. <laughs> um, he's my angel. I don't know. He's just really good. He's big. He's 90, my aunt just told me, he's like 93 pounds, oh he's massive, and he's gained a little weight since I moved out, but anyway, um, he is bigger than your average shepherd, so when people see him, they're like shook, <laughs> they're like, whoa, that's a really big dog, I'm like, yeah it is, and you probably shouldn't pet him, so I back up a little bit. He's very protective, but also nervous, so I think that combination is a little bit, um, you gotta be careful sometimes and you have to know like your dog, your own dog's behaviors as well as like anticipating strangers' behaviors. Cause we didn't socialize him, we didn't want to socialize him for that reason, we wanted a protective dog. It was like, err, scary. So, <laughs> he fits the bill. He's also like literally the goofiest dog in the world. He has such a like 
sweet personality, but he's fun and like dorky. And you wouldn't picture it by looking at him. He's all legs. Ow. <laughs> and he was all legs for like first three years of his life. So clumsy. But he's good. He's the goodest boy. And he's my son. And I love him. <laughs> and he's so cute. And I don't have favorites. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's fun. He loves his pack. His humans. And that's about it. He's not going to like lunge after you, but if you go to pet him, he will let you know, like, her back away. No thanks. This is my baby. Oh, my God. His ears aren't always that sweet. His ears. He has an ear infection, too. Kai, come here. Kai. 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 <laughs> this is my baby. Want to show them a trick? Hug. Hug. Give me a hug. Wow. Come, come. Hug. He doesn't want to jump. He's okay. sleepy. Maybe on the carpet. Come, come. Hug. He can hug with me. That's where he likes to sit. Who was your first pet that you have? We have her practicing to be a seal. You're doing pretty good, Kai. Look at her go. 